This is the story of St. Thomas Aquinas. The church remembers Thomas in the time of the color green. But I wonder why we remember Thomas. Let's see. When little Tommaso di Aquino was born, he first lived in an old castle about halfway between Naples and Rome. He was the last of four boys and five girls born into his family. When he was about five years old, his family gave him to the monastery at Monte Cassino. This was a great Benedictine monastery nearby. They thought that someday he would be the leader of the monks who lived there. When he was about 12 years old, he went to the University of Naples, which seems strange because he wasn't very old, but he was very smart for his age. At the University of Naples, he met Jordan of Saxony, who was a Dominican monk and a great teacher. He also began to read the books of a Greek philosopher named Aristotle. All the rest of his life, he had two favorite kinds of books. The Bible. And those that were written by Aristotle. Finally, he decided that he would not become a Benedictine monk, but instead became a Dominican friar or brother, like Jordan of Saxony. Thomas was very bright and very quiet. His nickname was the Silent Ox because he was also huge. Some people think he was six feet six inches tall. One day, he dropped a page of notes as he went into his room. Another student took it to his teacher, Albert the Great. After seeing the notes to the questions in a class, Albert said that this silent ox would be heard around the world. The Dominicans sent him to Paris, where the greatest university in the world was. There, he began to study how to talk about God. Talking about God is called theology. Thomas studied hard and earned a doctorate of theology degree and began to write theology. Ever since he was a little boy, he had had many questions about God. So he began to write his books that way. He would write a question write all the different answers he could find, and then write what he thought. He asked many questions and wrote pages and pages about Aristotle, the Bible, and God. Finally, when he was old on the Feast of St. Nicholas, something happened while he was presiding at Holy Communion. For three days, he was in a daze. Finally, he told a friend what he had discovered. The answers to his biggest questions about God were beyond words. He was not going to write anymore. He said that all that he had written was like so much straw. Now, he only wanted to be close to God. When Thomas was very old, the Pope sent him to a meeting in France. It was a long journey, and he died on the way. We remember Thomas because he asked questions for God. He found many answers he could write, but the most important thing he knew about God could not be put into words. He knew that being by close to God was the best way. Now, I wonder what parts of Thomas's story you like best. 
I wonder what part of the story is the most important. I wonder what part of the story is about you, or where you might be in this story. I wonder if we could leave any part of the story out and still have all the story that we need. Now, let me show you what's inside this booklet. Map, a flag, a timeline, and the story of Thomas. You can use it to find out much more about Thomas. Now let me show you how to put the story away. Here is the ox to remind us about what he was called when he was a student. Here are the two books Thomas loved, Aristotle and the Bible. Here is the straw. It reminds us that Thomas said all he wrote was like straw after he experienced God's presence in the Mass. Here is the booklet that helps us remember more about Thomas. And finally, here is the green underlay. Because we remember Thomas during the time of the green and growing Sundays during the year. Now, I wonder what you would like to do today to remember St. Thomas Aquinas. Thank you.